Happy holidays, and welcome to Tampa's favorite and most festive movie palace. I'm Jill Wittecki, Tampa Theater's Director of Marketing. We are so excited to continue one of our brightest traditions here at the theater each year, welcoming you to our Holiday Classics movie series. This season, we'll be showing four fantastic films. So sit back, grab a mug of hot chocolate, and in just a moment, I'll fill you in on the classic films that are sure to warm your hearts all over again, right here at Tampa Theater. Our first film this year is also the most contemporary of our classics. Released in 2003, Elf, starring Will Ferrell, is the story of an orphan raised at the North Pole as Santa's most overgrown helper, who returns to New York City to find his human roots and experience Christmas in the city as only an innocent elf can. But he was not the original choice to play the bumbling buddy. The role was originally slated to go to another famous funny man, Jim Carrey. But Farrell really threw himself into the role, roaming the streets of New York in costume to get genuine reactions on camera, and stuffing himself with all of the sugar-filled treats on the Elf food pyramid, so much so that he suffered headaches through most of the filming because of all the sugar. Even the cotton balls that he eats in the doctor's office are undyed cotton candy. And while Elf became an instant classic in its own right, Several of the scenes in the film pay tribute to other classic holiday films. The design for Santa's workshop and for the elf uniforms came from the 1964 Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer animated TV special. The exterior of Gimbel's department store is actually a digitally altered view of the 34th Street Macy's store. Gimbel's, which has since gone out of business, was Macy's main competitor in a rivalry famously depicted in the movie Miracle on 34th Street. And the scene in which Buddy is on the bridge in the snow? That's a reference to a similar scene in Tampa Theater's favorite Christmas classic, It's a Wonderful Life. Okay, people, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., Santa's coming to town. Santa! Oh, my God! Santa here? I know him. I know him. He'll be here to take pictures with all the children. Yeah. Just keep your receipts. 10 a.m. tomorrow. 10 a.m. tomorrow. Santa's coming to town. Yes. Can you sign this for me? Oh, hi. Santa's coming. We will be showing Elf at 3 p.m. Sunday, December 1st. Our next film is Miracle on 34th Street, the 1947 classic starring Maureen O'Hara and a very young Natalie Wood as her six-year-old daughter. Just like her character Susan, Natalie Wood truly believed that Edmund Gwen was Santa. Of course, so did many other children, after Gwen appeared as the famous face of Santa Claus during the 1946 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. All of the parade scenes that appeared in the movie were filmed that morning, and Miracle on 34th Street is credited with bringing the annual event into the national spotlight. Both Macy's and Gimbel's department stores were approached for permission to feature them in the movie. And both stores wanted to see the finished product before they gave that approval. If either store had refused, the filmmakers would have had to do extensive reshoots and edits to eliminate the references. Fortunately, at the test viewing, both stores were very pleased and granted their permission. The scenes at Macy's were shot on location at the main New York store, disrupting more than just daily sales. The crew's power needs so exceeded the store's electrical capacity that additional generators had to be installed in the store's basement for shooting to continue. And when the film was released, famous gossip columnist Hedda Hopper reported that Macy's will close for half a day so its 12,000 employees can see the first showing. Oh, you don't believe that, do you? Mm -mm. You see, my mother's Mrs. Walker, the lady who hired you. But I must say, you're the best looking one I've ever seen. Really? Your beard doesn't have one of those things that goes over your ears. Well, that's because it's real. Just like I'm really a Santa Claus. Oh, go ahead, pull it. Ah. Our showing of Miracle on 34th Street will be at 3 p.m. Sunday, December 8th. And the folks from Macy's Believe campaign will be on hand to help kids write their letters to Santa. 
When the film White Christmas was released in 1954, it became the top box office draw that year. The holiday love story has everything. War heroes, a beautiful song and dance sister act, a charming Vermont Lodge, and plenty of romantic mix-ups. And of course, it didn't hurt that the film starred Bing Crosby and shared its title with Bing's most famous song. In fact, White Christmas is considered the best-selling song of all times, having sold more than 400 million copies to date. Ironically, the song wasn't even written for this movie. In fact, Bing Crosby originally recorded it with Irving Berlin in 1942 for the movie Holiday Inn. The Vermont Lodge in White Christmas was likewise recycled, with those scenes having been shot on a remodeled set that originally appeared as the Connecticut Hotel from Holiday Inn. During filming, Crosby's sidekick Danny Kaye caused retake after retake, cracking up his co-stars with his antics. The sisters comedy act that Crosby and Kaye performed together was not originally in the script, the duo was clowning around on the set, and the director thought it was so funny that it was written into the script. Many takes were attempted, but Crosby was unable to hold a straight face due to Kay's comedic dancing. The scene in the film was the best take they could get, and Crosby's laughs are both genuine and unscripted. Come see White Christmas at 3 p.m. Sunday, December 15th. And finally, it's a wonderful weekend with five showtimes of our most popular holiday classic, The Weekend Before Christmas. It's a Wonderful Life always packs the house at Tampa Theater, but that wasn't the case when the film first opened. When it debuted in December 1946, the feel-good film about a small town hero was a box office flop. And though the film was nominated for five Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Director, Actor, Sound Recording, and Editing, it failed to win a single award. Still, director Frank Capra later said that the film was his personal favorite. Jimmy Stewart also called George Bailey his favorite character to play, a performance made that much stronger by the real emotion that he poured into the role. In the phone scene, Stewart was nervous about the kiss with co-star Donna Reed because it was his first screen kiss since his return to Hollywood after the war. Under director Capra's watchful eye, Stewart filmed the scene in one unrehearsed take, and it worked so well that part of the embrace was cut because it was considered too passionate to pass the censors. Now you listen to me. I don't want any plastics, and I don't want any ground floors, and I don't want to get married ever to anyone. You understand that? I want to do what I want to do. And you're... And you're... Oh, Mary. George, George, George. In the scene where George prays in the bar, Stuart did a rehearsal that was so powerful he cried real tears. But when it came time to shoot an actual take, Stuart told director Capra he didn't think he could come close to doing it again. Fortunately, Capra was rolling film on the rehearsal, and that take made the final cut. Even George's nervous breakdown on the bridge was rooted in reality. No, Stuart wasn't really losing his mind, but he truly was pouring sweat because it was 90 degrees the day that scene was filmed and he was sweltering in his heavy winter clothes. But one of the most famous moments in the movie was actually a mistake. In the scene where a drunk Uncle Billy staggers away from George's house, it sounds like he trips over a pile of garbage cans just off screen. In reality, a young crew member dropped an armload of equipment right at the moment actor Thomas Mitchell walked out of frame. The crewman was terrified that he'd be fired, but both Mitchell and Stuart continued the scene with Mitchell improvising the line, I'm all right, I'm all right. I'm all right, I'm all right. Oh, sweetie. Director Frank Capra liked the hilarious moment so much, he kept it in the film and gave the clumsy crewman a $10 bonus. Showtimes for It's a Wonderful Life are 7.30 p.m. Friday, December 20th, 3 and 7.30 p.m. Saturday, December 21st, and 3 and 7.30 p.m. Sunday, December 22nd. Thanks for joining me on Behind the Red Curtain at Tampa Theater. I hope to see all of you at our historic movie palace making memories this December. So from all of us at Tampa Theater, happy holidays and welcome to the show. He's making a list, checking it twice.
Gonna find out who's naughty and nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping. He 